truck driver. There are some skills that you simply must master. Today, we're going to tackle one of those skills, and that is backing. So stick around, and let's talk about it. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to another episode with your OTR truck driving instructor. I am here <clears throat> for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to try and help as many drivers as I can be better at their jobs, their careers, um, and ultimately succeed in this thing called the trucking industry. <clears throat> this, this one thing today, this backing thing, because that's what we're talking about today, backing. Um, this is probably one of the hardest things for drivers to get. Now, when you get out of school, you've been in school probably two or three weeks, um, you're not going to be great at it. Um, but I hope that you at least know the basics. Um, if you're in school right now, <clears throat> um, I hope that, uh, that you'll listen to some of these basics that I'm going to give you because they do matter. And a lot, well, some of these things they don't really discuss at school very much, or they might kind of glaze over it, but you don't know exactly what they're talking about, and you don't want to ask questions because you don't want to look like the odd guy out, right? You don't want to look like the person that, oh, I really don't know anything. Well, guess what? You're in school for a reason. Most uh, of your other classmates don't have any idea either, okay? So, but, so but, um, I want to go over some basic tips with you guys um, so that you can get better faster. Okay, again, don't expect it to, to happen overnight. Um, unless you grew up on a farm driving a tractor with a trailer, um, or unless you've done a lot of boating in your life, pulling trailers, uh, your backing skills probably aren't that great. Um, and that's okay. But we're gonna get on it. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna make sure that when it comes time to test out and further into your career, that you've got the knowledge that you need, the tips that you need to help you make it a little bit further, a little bit faster in your backing. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Tip number one today. Wherever the bottom of your steering wheel is going is where your trailer is going. Now, that might seem like counterintuitive, but that's exactly how it works because, see, when you turn the top of your wheel to the right, the bottom of your wheel is going to the left, right? So top of the wheel right, bottom of the wheel left. That's just kind of the way it goes, okay? Um, and when you go the other way, obviously, your trailer is going to go the other way, okay? So you're backing up. If you're turning from the bottom of the wheel and you go right, with the bottom of your wheel, the back of your trailer is going to go to the right. If you're backing up and you turn the bottom of your wheel to the left, the back of your trailer is going to start going to the left. That's counterintuitive for everybody because what are we used to? Well, we're used to obviously the vehicle going the way that you steer, right? Because if you don't have a trailer, you're backing up a car, a pickup truck, or whatever, you turn to the right, going forward, it goes right. You turn to the right, going backwards, it goes right. Okay, well, now you've got a trailer, so you've got that you've got that fulcrum there, okay, that's going to uh, determine which way the trailer goes. You're actually pushing the trailer. You're not driving the trailer, okay? So, as you're backing up, remember, the bottom of the wheel, whichever way it goes, is the way your trailer is going to go. That is probably the biggest thing to remember. Um, some people, you know, going with opposites works. Some people it doesn't. Now, if you're one who thinks, hey, if I turn my steering wheel to the left while I'm going backwards, I'm going to go right. And if I turn the steering wheel to the right, I'm going to go left. If you can get that in your head, that's great. That's perfect. It doesn't matter which way you remember it. The point is, you've got to remember that it's not the way you're used to doing it in the car. Okay? Now, <laughs> while that sounds 
odd in itself. Another thing that's going to sound odd to a lot of you, and some of you have already garnered this, but some of you won't. Some people, it takes a bit. Some people are a bit mm, slower than others. Um, if you don't have a trailer on, this thing backs just like a car, okay? So if you turn right, you're going right. If you turn left, you're going left. Now, the important thing to remember is that you do or you don't have a trailer on, okay? That's what's important to remember. You've got to remember whether or not you have a trailer on, and you have to remember that's what makes the difference, okay? A lot of people have a hard time with that for starting out, okay? But just know that if you have a trailer on, you want to turn the opposite way of the way that you're going, or you want to turn the bottom of the steering wheel the way that you want to go. All right. <sighs> the main thing about backing is getting lots of practice. Um, now, you're in school probably, or you're a new driver um, out with the trainer. You don't necessarily have a lot of time for just going out into an empty parking lot and working on your backing, okay? Um, hopefully, you get several um, hours of backing in while you're with your trainer. Meanwhile, at school, you're going to get a few hours um, and uh, those few hours may or may not be enough for you. So here are some things that you can do that could help you uh, on your backing skills. First of all, if you like to play pool and there's a pool table close to you, go shoot some pool, okay? You say, well, I've never played pool in my life. Start. Here's why. The better you can get at pool, the better you understand the angles of, the, of those balls, the better you're going to start to understand the angles of your tractor trailer when you're backing, okay? Because where you hit, you know, you got your cue ball, then you got your regular ball, right? You hit that cue ball into this ball. Based on where this ball hits this ball is going to determine where this ball goes, right? So if you hit this ball a little this way, it's going to go this way. If you hit this ball this way, it's going to go this way, right? Same thing with the tractor trailer. So practice up on your pool, guys. <laughs> Uh, another thing that you can do is get a decent sized toy semi truck and practice backing with it because yes as long as it's a decent size I mean don't don't try to get one of these little ones you know that are you know maybe 10 inches long two inches wide whatever that's not gonna help you a lot I mean it can but get a good size plastic one um, or if if you can get a remote control one that'll help you even more um, but just practice with it, you know, sit in your room for hours, just playing with that. Um, it can help. Uh, and another thing that can help is to get a truck simulator video game. Um, you should be able to download one for free on your phone. Um, there are some that you can actually buy others that are free. So, uh, definitely look into getting one of those. I think that, uh, that that's probably helped more drivers than you can imagine okay what's the biggest thing to make sure that you are ready for your back and that is the lineup okay um, and you've probably been taught at school many times you know stay close to your left as you're backing and then as soon as your nose gets to a certain point you want to turn all the way to the right and then back to the left and that should line you up for a perfect back, right? That sounds great. It should work for your testing, okay? So definitely, you know, it, they've got certain things down. Um, they may have you, you know, look in your mirror at certain points on the trailer, whether it be your tandems, whether it be your, uh, well, many have you look at the landing gear and plan your turns based on the landing gear. And that's great for getting you through the test, okay? Most CDL testing is going to be done on level ground without a lot of holes, okay? In real life, you're not going to always be backing on level ground, and there are going to be plenty of potholes, okay? And that's just fact, okay? I'm, I'm not just trying to blow smoke up your butt, make it sound harder than it is, but when you're not on level ground, 
and when there is potholes, that changes everything. Okay, or if you're doing it on a dark rainy night and you can't see those points that they pointed out to you that you need to pay attention to, it makes it more difficult. Or if you have a bright light shining in your eye because anymore that's what a lot of truck stops and businesses like to do. They think, oh, well, we want to be safe out here. We want to have as much light as possible, not thinking about the fact that they're blinding the drivers while they're backing. Um, so real life scenarios aren't as nice and easy I say easy kind of tongue in cheek because obviously to you right now just learning it's not easy and that's okay it, it shouldn't be easy it's normal for it not to be easy um, but when you're backing um, for the test do what they tell you to do watch those focal points they tell you to focus on um, when you're when you're doing that back but the main part of the back before you ever get to that point of the back is that lineup Okay. I cannot stress enough to line up as far to the left as possible. <clears throat> um, in a tight spot, you may want to take your tandems all the way to the rear before you even line up for that back. couple reasons why. Number one, many, many, many customers will require that your tandems are all the way back when you back into that door. <clears throat> it keeps the back of the trailer higher. So that way their forklift, when it's coming in and out, isn't bouncing all over the place, okay? It's a safety issue for them to not have your tandems all the way to the back. So one of the best things to do, even if they don't require it, is to put those tandems all the way to the back. Because, okay, when you're backing, what are you looking at primarily? What do you, what, what do you want to have in a certain location? It's the rear of the trailer, right? But here's the deal, okay? The rear of the trailer isn't really what's going to get you there because there's no wheels on the rear of the trailer. The wheels are under the trailer, right? And those wheels are what you need to push into location or steer into location, okay? So what you want to be paying attention to is the track of those tandem tires on your trailer. Now, if you're too close to the left and you go in and you make your swing out, and you swing too tight, if your tandems aren't all the way back, say they're all the way forward, okay, you've got a lot of footage of trailer hanging over, which means you've got a lot of area that's liable to swing into the trailers that you're pulling up in front of before you swing out to make your back, okay? <clears throat> that may sound basic, and you may say, well, it, that can't happen. You can't really, you know, hit those trailers with the back of your trailer. Yes, you can. Okay. So you want to maintain at least a three-foot distance out in front of those trailers that you're pulling up in front of if you don't have your tandems all the way back. Now, for the test in school, they're not going to let you put those tandems all the way back. So just keep this in your mind for future reference once you're out on the road. Okay. So you're lining up. You're coming up. Here's, here's where you're backing in. You're pulling up like this. You're swooping out, swooping over, and backing in, right? <clears throat> what, are you, what are you looking at? Many times they'll tell you, watch the back of the trailer. You don't want to watch the back of the trailer until you are straight. I mean, you want to kind of keep an eye on it, but again, that's not your primary, primary turning point. Your turning point is your wheel track, which is below the trailer where your wheels are. So watch those wheels. Watch those wheels because ultimately you hit a cone with one of those wheels and you fell, right? So you don't want to hit that cone. And if you're watching the back of the trailer instead of watching your wheels, you can hit a cone or anything else that might be there. Okay. Watch those wheels. Okay. <clears throat> when you're backing... Um, then this is something that I see a lot uh, from new drivers is that they're constantly looking in that right side mirror if they're back into the left or they're constantly looking in the left side mirror if they're back into the right so maybe we need to look at what happens after you line up okay Maybe when you line up, you shouldn't just swing out and start backing, right? No, of course you shouldn't. The first thing that you should do <clears throat> once you get lined up, you know, you come up, 
to the point where you're going to turn out to start your back, get to that point, get out of the truck, and look. You want to look down where you're going to be backing. You want to look all around the lot. Okay. Now, you get back in the truck. You pull out, do your thing like you're going to back. You stop. You get out of that truck. You walk all the way around it, and you look all around the lot and down where you're wanting to, to go to, right? Okay. Now you get back into your truck. You glance in that right-hand mirror, and then you look in your left-hand mirror, and you pay attention to that left-hand mirror while you're backing because that right-hand mirror, you're not going to see anything, okay? All you're going to see, if you're like this, you're backing this way, your tractor is right here, all you're going to see out of that right-hand mirror is blank. You're going to see nothing. You're going to see a bunch of parking, a uh, bunch of uh, parking lot behind you, okay? That mirror is not going to help you any until you're straight with your trailer. Once you can look down beside your trailer more, it'll help you, okay? But you got to get straight first, okay? So while you start your back, the only mirror you need to be looking in is your left mirror. That left mirror is the only mirror that has any information for you. And if you keep going back and forth with your sight, looking left to right, left to right in those mirrors, all it does is confuses the mind, okay? Don't do it. Look in that left mirror while you are backing. An occasional glance in that right mirror, just to make sure nobody's coming at you fast from that side or something stupid, is okay. But to be looking in that mirror and continue backing looking in that mirror does nothing for you except make you miss your back. Watch your left mirror when you're backing to the left. Watch your right mirror when you're backing to the right. Plain and simple. When you're doing a straight back, then you watch both mirrors. Otherwise, you watch the mirror on the side that you're backing in mostly. All right? <clears throat> so, now we just talked about something else aside from the backing that's a big part of the backing, and that is get out and look. Okay? <clears throat> and probably on your mirror... There at your school, you will see goal written across the bottom, G-O-A-L, in bold letters. Goal means get out and look. It's a reminder. Most company trucks um, these days also have that same sticker on the bottom of the mirrors to remind drivers, get out and look. Okay? Takes a minute to do, and yes, invariably you will, once you're out in the real, real world, at truck stops, customers whatever yes invariably you're going to have truck drivers that are impatient like oh my god i can't believe he's actually getting out and looking oh my god i can't believe he's taking so long to do this don't worry about them okay you have to take care of your license and your truck okay not those other drivers they have nothing to do with your license and your truck they have nothing to do with your job they have nothing to do with your career okay so don't worry about that Get out and look, all right? <clears throat> Which brings me to the second thing. Go slow and don't panic, okay? When doing the driving test, you have a, a certain number of pull-ups, and that number of pull-ups really depends on what state you're in, um, what the uh, examiner allows, um, a lot of different things, uh, go into that. Uh, I wish I could say it's more standardized, and for the most part, it's becoming more and more standardized across the states, but it is not entirely standardized yet, uh, and generally, one or two pull-ups is uh, generally what they allow. So, when you're backing, okay, go as slow as possible. Okay, The faster you go, the harder it is to correct or counter steer to make sure that your trailer is going the way that it's supposed to go. Okay? And so it's going if you're going faster and you go to do it, you're going to you're going to swing too wide or or too short really fast. And you won't have time to correct it and you're going to have to do another pull up. Okay? Take your time, go slow. You know, if you get frustrated, stop. Take time to calm yourself. 
make a plan in your head and then execute that plan okay don't allow yourself to get overly frustrated because when you get overly frustrated you're not remaining calm what you're gonna do is you're gonna send your mind into a frenzy and you're not gonna remember what you're supposed to do okay so take your time go slow don't panic make a plan and execute your plan um, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do while you're moving isn't a great idea when you're first starting out okay so make sure you've got a plan in your mind as to what you're doing before you do it and then do it now if you do have to pull up a time or two and it's within you know what your examiner allows do it don't feel bad you know maybe somebody else in your class did it one shot no pull-ups good for them they passed the test maybe you're gonna have to take the the allowed two pull-ups you still pass the test right so you got to the same point right so what does it matter that one had to pull up twice and the other one didn't? Here's how much it matters. Zero. It matters zero. The point is passing the test, not to see who can pass the test the best way. Okay, That's not the point. This is not a competition. This is you securing your future as a driver. Remember that? Keep it professional. It's not a game. You use what you've got to use for your resources to get it done. <clears throat> All right. So, you know you want to get out and look. You know you want to go slow. Um, in the real world, if it's possible to have a guide, use it. Okay? Uh, maybe you're at a truck stop and there's another driver from your company right there handy that can help you out that's great when you're with your trainer hopefully for the first couple weeks he's working really hard to help you as you're backing in if you do not have a set of walkie talkies GMRS whatever okay those can be very helpful okay that way you've got one in the cab whoever is guiding you has one that helps out a lot okay if not what can work out even better is if you're both smart enough to use your cell phones okay put your Bluetooth on call your trainer or maybe if it's a guy from the company that you work with and you know him give him your number say hey call me while we're doing this so I can hear you okay this helps a lot Okay. When you're backing also, don't say left or right. Instead, say driver's side or passenger side. Okay, That makes sure that everyone is clear on everything because depending on the mindset, depending on, on a lot of different things, what's right to one and left to the other may be just the opposite to the other, especially if your spotter is in front of you or behind you, their left or right is going to change, right? Um, and you can't always go say that, well, they're going to use my left and right, obviously. Well, no, not necessarily. Okay. So make a deal with whoever's backing you or helping you back, being your spotter, that they say driver's side or passenger side. Um, if you feel like you cannot trust your guide, block them out block them out okay a lot of times some people who will try to be helpful a lot of times they're less help than they think they are and in that case you just have to block them out and do your best um, but hopefully you have a guy that you can trust especially if it's your your trainer um, and remember that when when someone backs you in Remember to just say thank you, okay? They didn't have to do that, okay? Now, if it's your trainer, yeah, he kind of needed to do that. It's kind of his responsibility to help do that. But if it's somebody else, say thank you. 
you know, whether it's just a, hey, thank you, you know, wave of the, nod of the head, wave of the hand, you know, whatever, you know, say thank you. Uh, don't just be like, man, yeah, well, whatever, blah, 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 okay? Say thank you. Have some manners. Okay. <clears throat> Those are really the best tips that I can give you as far as backing goes. Um, but there are, are things uh, that you don't want to do, I guess, uh, as well when backing. As I've already said, don't use the opposite mirror. Okay? Don't do it. It's going to confuse the mind. Okay? Use the mirror on the side that you're backing. Okay? Second, don't listen to the radio. Okay? When you're backing, turn the radio off. You need your concentration on what you're doing here, and you need to hear anything. If you run over something, you need to be able to hear it. <laughs> okay? So turn off the radio. And unless you are on another channel besides 19 with another driver directly across from you who's helping you back on the same channel you're on, which is not 19, turn the CB off. If you have a CB in your truck, turn the CB off while you are backing. Okay? A couple reasons. Number one, we got a lot of idiots out here. Okay? And there will be idiots sitting in a truck maybe five trucks down across the aisle from where you're backing in and they're going to tell you everything wrong just because they think it's funny or they're just going to make fun of you on the radio they're going to be ah you see that new driver he's obviously a new driver ah these idiots are idiots okay you don't need to be listening to that while you're trying to back it's very distracting very annoying so turn the CV off unless you've got it on another channel with a driver that you know is actually trying to help you back in. Um, and the third thing, which I already mentioned as well, do not steer the back of your trailer. You're not steering the back of your trailer, okay? You are pushing your tandems, okay? Watch your tandems. Watch the tandem track. That's how you get a trailer where you want it to go. Watch your tandem track. If, when you go to back, you can see that there are obvious grooves from where other trucks have been backing in for years, okay? The best thing that you can do is watch those tracks, watch your tandems, and let your tandems or push your tandems down those tracks that are already there, okay? All right, guys. Um, I think that's all for backing. Uh, I probably missed a lot of things. Uh, there's probably a lot of things I should have said that I didn't say. Um, you know, I, I try to keep notes for these videos, and I try to make sure I follow along with them. Um, sometimes I, I forget to put something in the notes. Sometimes I forget something. Other times I remember things uh, on the fly that I didn't put in my notes. Um, but I try to cover as much for each topic as I can to make sure that you know what you need to know to get the job done. So, I think that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, also, uh, you know, don't hesitate to uh, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Between now and then, keep the shiny side up, keep the greasy side down, and we'll catch you on the flip-flop. <laughs>